Hello Year 7, welcome to week 2 of War Poetry. This week we're going to be looking at Dolce Decorum S by Wilfred Owen. Make sure you've got the poem in front of you and your copy of the fact book as well as your equipment. We're going to make a start straight away with a knowledge quiz this week to make sure that you have understanding of these key words. So write these five words down on a piece of paper. Then what I would like you to do is to write a definition of what each of them means and if you can, an example of each of them. So you've got simile, personification, metaphor, repetition and iambic pentameter. Give yourself five minutes and do that task now. OK, hopefully you've had a go at doing that task. going to go through the answers and definitions to those words. Mark them as you go. So the first one was a simile. This is a comparison with two items using like or as. So example here, the wind howled like a dog. Number two, personification. An inanimate object is given human-like qualities. So the sun smiled. Number three, a metaphor suggests that one thing is another thing. So, for example, his hair is black coal. Number four, repetition. A word or phrase is repeated for effect. For example, no more fighting, no more war. And the final one, iambic pentameter. We looked at this one and you were given the definition last week, so hopefully you've remembered. The pattern or rhythm of a line of poetry, it has 10 syllables per line. So we've got an example from Shakespeare here. Shall I compare thee to a summer's day? Give yourself a mark out of five. Hopefully you did well. If there were any that you were, uh, didn't get right, then you know what you need to practice and remember for next time. So we're going to start by having a read of the poem. Take a few moments to read the poem to yourself, either out loud or in your head. If you find this difficult, you can listen to an audio recording of the poem. Use this link here. If you struggle with the link, simply go to YouTube and type those words in at the bottom of the screen here. Dolce Decorum S by Wilfred Owen, read by Christopher Eccleston. Do that now. OK, so now you've read through the poem and you've got a feel for it, we're going to have a look at the context. So this poem was written during World War I by Wilfred Owen, a soldier during the war himself. Owen wanted to show the realities of war. Many people back home were innocent to the horrors of war and propaganda was used to shield them. Men were needed to fight and join the army, so the propaganda showed a positive light on war, presented men as heroes. Owen experienced many horrors and suffered from PTSD. His poetry reflects his experiences. So we've got a, word, um, a phrase in bold and underlined there. I'm going to have a look with you at what that means. You may have heard of this. PTSD stands for Post Traumatic Stress Disorder. It's an anxiety disorder caused by very stressful, frightening or distressing events. It's very common with soldiers that have experienced the horrors of war. So what is the poem actually about? The poem describes a gas attack in World War I. It reveals the terrible consequences of war and death of the soldiers. It explores the reality of trench life. So we're going to get straight on with our analysis. Make sure you've got your poem in front of you. You're going to need to use your pen and your highlighter to go through and annotate as we go along. Bent double like old beggars under sacks. Not need coughing like hags we cursed through sludge. So the poem opens with um, two similes here. The poet is comparing the soldiers with beggars and hags. It reflects their poor state of health. Till on the haunting flares we turned our backs and towards our distant rest began to trudge. Men marched asleep. Use of alliteration here with men marched um, suggests to us that soldiers are so tired that they're marching wearily, almost as if they are walking in their sleep. Many had lost their boots but limped on, bloodshot, all went lame, all blind. So here we've got even more um, highlights 
of just how awful the conditions were. It refers to the fact that the soldiers have lost their boots, but they're limping. And this phrase, bloodshod, simply means shoes of blood. Many soldiers suffered from something called trench foot, where their feet were in such poor condition from constantly being wet and soggy from the mud that they had sores and blisters and the skin um, even fell off and became infected. Drunk with fatigue, deaf even to the hoots of gas shells dropping softly behind. This image here um, of the soldiers being drunk with fatigue fatigue suggests that they're so tired that they're stumbling around on the battlefield as if they're drunk. Um, there's even a loss of awareness to the dangers around them. They've become deaf to the sounds of the gas shells, which all of which highlights their poor condition and just the awful realities of um, life on the battlefield for the soldiers. On to the next section then. Gas, gas, quick boys, an ecstasy of fumbling fitting the clumsy helmets just in time. So here we have the actual gas attack. The punctuation is used to show the soldiers fear and panic. They're stumbling and fumbling around trying to fit their gas masks before the gas um, gets to them. But someone still is yelling out and stumbling and floundering like a man in fire or lime, dim through the misty panes and thick green light, as under a green sea I saw him drowning. So we've got a description here of a soldier who fails to put his mask on in time. The gas is described through this metaphor of a green sea. And we've got this image of the soldier drowning under this sea of gas. Really awful, really vivid description to highlight just how terrifying this sight was of this soldier who is dying from the gas and this gas attack. In all my dreams, before my helpless sight, he plunges at me, guttering, choking, drowning. So we've got a personal reality and reflection shown here from the poet. His experience of seeing another man die in front of him, really, really awful. These words, guttering, choking, drowning, really paint a graphic image for us of just how horrifying that image must have been for him. If in some smothering dreams you too could pace behind the wagon that we flung him in and watch the white eyes writhing in his face, his hanging face like a devil's sick of sin. So at the beginning of this stanza, we've got the poet who's asking the reader to imagine for themselves this reality. He's involving the reader with the use of this personal pronoun here where he says, you too could pace behind the wagon that we flung him in. It's really asking the reader to put themselves in this situation and almost live the realities of war that he himself has seen. So again, we've got some vivid and shocking imagery here. And the, watch the white eyes writhing in his face, his hanging face, like a devil's sick of sin. So use of a simile here, comparing his face to that of the devil who's sick of sin. Continuing on then, if you could hear at every jolt the blood come gargling from the froth-corrupted lungs, obscene as cancer, bitter as the cud, of vile, incurable sores on innocent tongues. We've got some sensory imagery here. So the poet encourages to uh, use our sense of hearing to switch on our ears at this point. It brings even more horror. You can hear that gargling of the blood from the froth corrupted lungs. It really paints quite a harrowing image. We've also got um, comparison here of the gas obscene as cancer it is comparing it to that awful disease of cancer um that section there where it says incurable sores on innocent tongues it's emphasizing to us that these soldiers they're innocent they essentially have done nothing wrong they're giving up their lives to fight for their country it then goes on to say, my friend, you would not tell with such high zest to children ardent for some desperate glory, the old lie, dolce et decorum est pro patria mori. 
so where it says here my friend is a direct address to someone called Jessie Pope she was a writer and a journalist during this time um, and she was well known for encouraging the images that were presented in propaganda. She um, encouraged in her own writing this positive spin, this positive light on the war. Um, she was involved in trying to encourage men to join up to the army. But in this poem, Wilfred Owen is asking her and the people at home to not be fooled by the unrealistic images of war and he's painting um, a really realistic view of what he experienced during the war here. So Owen wanted to show the reality of war and believed that it was not sweet or right to die for your country, which is what the use of Latin here implies. Dolce et decorum est pro patria mori is uh, Latin, and it means it is sweet and honourable to die for your country. So this was a message that was openly encouraged for men back home. It was um, to encourage them to join the uh, to join the war, to become a soldier. That it was honourable and it was the right thing to do to uh, fight for your country and essentially to die for your country. But Wilfred Owen wants people to know the reality of what they're getting themselves in for. It is not a positive picture that he paints. So hopefully you've gone through and managed to um, annotate your poem, poem as I've gone through. But if you um, have missed any parts out, feel free to pause the video here and spend a bit of time adding more detail to your analysis. So what I want to just go on to are a couple of final tasks for this lesson. These are also on your fact, um, fact book um, sheet. So the poem is very tragic and uses haunting imagery. What does the phrase men march to sleep or the words guttering, choking, drowning make you think and feel about war? Secondly, Owen creates a strong sense of pity towards the soldiers throughout the poem. Can you find any words or phrases which might suggest this? Thirdly, the poem uses part iambic pentameter in the first stanza, which gives a marching rhythm to the poem. But this is lost in the second stanza. What might this suggest about the war? And the final task, the poem might be seen as a response to war propaganda. The Latin at the end of the poem, Dolce et decorum est per patria mori, means it is sweet and honourable to die for your country, which was a concept that Owen strongly disagreed with and shows his disapproval of war propaganda throughout the poem. How do you think people at the time felt about Owen's poem and what it revealed? So there are four questions there that I would like you to attempt and um, have a go at writing them out, write your answers, try and pick out evidence from the poem where possible, have a go at going through those um, and see how you get on. That's the end of this lesson for this week. Hope you get on with the tasks okay. Thank you.